So this is just a, a quick um, um, video on how I'm stitching out this applique patch that we're learning in um, the software lesson for the cut work. And a couple of things I wanted to point out. I'm stitching on a Bernina 880, but this is certainly applicable to any of the 7 series machines as well. If you are dealing with a relatively um, uh, very pretty but delicate thread that tends to break, a couple of things to keep in mind. First thing is in the needle, uh, I have a size 90 Metafill needle um, or an embroidery needle. Metafill I generally like a little bit better because the eye is a little more rounded. I also wanted to point out that on your 7 and 8 series machines you can get an optional uh, thread stand and I like these stands in particular when I'm dealing with delicate threads. Uh, this has the adapter that you would use on a 7 series machine. The adapter on the 8 series is a little bit different. I don't need to take it off but it, it's in the back of the machine. I'm going to kind of just bring this up and over so you can kind of see. So it connects you can see it kind of connects back here. And what I do is I have the thread on the machine. Let me see if I can get you positioned a little bit better. So it goes up from the spool, comes up through this eye, and then on the 8 series it has a built-in um, thread stand here, which is, which is nice. But it's going through the thread stand here and then through the machine. And what I'm getting at here is if you've got a delicate thread, a couple of things to do. Slow the machine down, use an appropriate size needle, generally the larger the better, and also consider reducing your thread tension. So on your machines, on all the uh, 8 and 7 series machines, it'll be similar. It's this little guy up here and when you click on this you can see there's like a yellow box around this that's at 2.25 the standard for embroidery is 2.75 and I just knocked this down a couple of pegs because the thread was breaking but as you can see it is stitching out successfully and when I come back I'm going to have this um, stitched out and then I'm going to just show you the cut work portion because you've, em you've done embroidery before notice um, on this machine I have the large oval hoop on and I do not have the tray on. Um, and you can do that with the large oval or the small or the medium. But once you get past this size, you really want that, um, that tray on. And the reason why I don't have the tray on is I do want to show you how, can, how you can use the free arm uh, for embroidery because we had questions of that during our last class. So as you can see, I completed the embroidery part of making this patch and off camera I did a couple of things. The first thing is I took off foot number 26 which is your standard embroidery foot and instead in lieu of that I put on foot 44 C which is also known as an echo quilting foot. It has a dual purpose. Also if you look close you're going to see in the needle bar there is now the cut work tool and as I mentioned in class before there's a little window here and this blade can do one of four positions and as you turn the blade you'll see like the number two the number three the number four etc and uh, you just simply turn those when you're directed to you don't necessarily in all cut work designs go through all four blade positions so do by all means do pay attention to what the screen is showing you. Speaking of the screen, let's come back up to the screen here. I'm going to back out just a bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. And so a couple of things that we do want to make sure is you can see here that uh, where the thread color shows it is saying now that I want to use uh, cut one or position one. It's also giving me a red caution sign saying that um, this foot, foot number 26, is not appropriate for this technique. So I'm going to click on uh, the foot part and you're going to see that the recommended foot, because it knows it's cut work, is actually foot 44C and indeed that's what I have on the machine. So as I select this you'll see that, or you could hear I should say, that the, um, the hoop moved and also that now I have um, a foot uh, icon here but there's no caution sign 
which is good. Also, uh, do take note that you should be using your uh, straight stitch plate on your machine. If you did have the 9mm or your 5.5mm plate, the machine would not be able to say you're using the wrong foot. It doesn't detect, excuse me, the wrong stitch plate. It does not detect the stitch plate. I highly recommend use the straight stitch plate or the cut work plate for the cut work tool and you'll get better results that way. And also, this will tell the machine not to ever do a stitch with width, um, which is important because the next day I might forget that I have the plate on and my machine knows because I told it what stitch plate I have on. So let me focus back down on the work surface so you can kind of see this working. Um, I'm not going to go through all four positions because once you kind of see this happening, you kind of get it. Um, it's not very impressive when it's cutting because you don't think it's doing anything, but when it completes it, that definitely is an oh wow moment. So I'm going to go ahead and push the start button and it will go into the position. And let me come back up here because you'll see this as well. You'll get this cue just saying you do have the uh, zero millimeter plate on or straight stitch plate on and you did put on 44C. It's just reminding us to, that we need to do this. So we're going to say yes, we have that uh, we have that put on. So I'm going to come back over here, push the start button. And you'll see that the the hoop just moves to the different positions on this design that requires that angle of the blade that's that's angle number one. So it stops and then I'm just going to come back up to the screen so you can see it's now telling me that I need blade number two or position number two. I'm going to come back down to the gizmo. That's the technical term for this. Here it is. I just turn it to position number two. Push start and it will continue to cut now all of the positions that require the number two angle. And I'm going to stop the video here until it's finished cutting and then we'll come back together. So we're back. Uh, it's finished cutting. It's done all four positions. I like to have with me a little pair of scissors in case there's like a thread here or there that needs to be trimmed. You can certainly take it the hoop off the machine at this point, but for the camera work I'm going to try to leave it on. I'm just taking my finger underneath and pushing up and you can kind of see how it's trying to release here. And so I'm just going to come in here and just do a little bit of trimming. So again, just off camera, I just lifted it up and, and I'm taking the scissor in essence and just kind of going like this just to get what little threads might have been there. And you can see it, it popped out pretty darn clean. You can see the, the cut edge here that it gives us. And again, you could have like, um, if you're doing like applique patches, you couldn't embroider six layers on top because again, the embroidery is just one layer. But if you had say felt uh, flowers, something like this, you could cut up like uh, like six layers, you know, in the, in the hoop and cut them all out at once. But again, the patch came out really nice. There's some cutaway on the back. Um, and then what I'm going to show next on camera is we're going to be applying this um, this patch to um, some um, play clothes that I have here at the house. Play clothes are generally what you don't want to be seen in in public because they're very comfortable but not a fashion statement. But we all have those play clothes and we're all friends here so you get to see my play clothes next. So what I have here for your viewing pleasure is a pair of... Um, bamboo slacks that I should have thrown out 15 years ago but sometimes it's just the principle of the thing. So you can see in this one pant leg, let me get a little bit closer, that I have darned this thing. Um, I have um, 
you know, with a uh, free motion on the uh, sewing machine with some um, stabilizer in the back, et cetera, et cetera. But yet it keeps developing holes. And again, after a couple of years, you're going to expect that. Uh, but these are just little house pant plant. They're just house plants or maybe pants. Uh, in any event, we have this like really way cute little patch here. And I'm thinking, wouldn't that be good just to put over some of those holes? So the reason why I'm doing this project, of course, to show you the cut work tool, you've all been through applique before. But a question came up about the free arm on the uh, Bernina machine uh, last, uh, last month. And so I thought, let me show you how with a tubular object, which is a pant leg, how you can put that and embroider on your Bernina machine uh, as opposed to using, say, a flatbed um, embroidery machine like the other brands. It's the advantage of the setup that we have. And again, <clears throat> just so we are, we're perfectly clear, let me just kind of move the camera over here. And so you can see that where the embroidery arm and the machine starts, the dividing point is right here. That's very unique. Most of the embroidery modules will kind of nestle up between the free arm here, but we still have this free arm space and it was designed such so that with tubular objects you absolutely can um, embroider without having to take apart the side seam. So think jeans, think um, anything that's tubular. Um, you could even do it on a tote bag if you wanted to uh, close up the bottom beforehand. There is a new hoop that Bernina came out with, Last BU, which is a, a free arm hoop. Uh, and in essence, what happens is the connecting mechanism, that which connects to your arm here, is actually part of the inner hoop, which is this part here. So the inner hoop can now clamp onto here. So you could make, say, a tote bag that has already been made, uh, and you can embroider on the front of it without having to take anything apart. If you didn't have that hoop, and it's a nice hoop to get, don't get me wrong, you can still um, do it this method. The only thing is, is if you're making the tote bag, don't close up the bottom before embroidering so it's a tube. Or you could put a slit into it so that the mechanism that hooks onto the machine um, is free to hook onto the machine. But our mechanism is on the outer hoop, which is underneath the project. Now off camera, I'm not going to do this on camera because you guys kind of know about this type of stuff, but I'm going to take some like wonder clip clips and I'm going to um, uh, roll this up to get the material out of the way and then I'll be back and I'll show you how I put this onto the machine. So as I am rolling up the pant leg, I did want to come back on camera just to um, show some of you and remind others of you that Wonder Clips, which is made by Clover, comes in actually three different sizes. The original ones were these guys here. They're about a quarter of an inch. Great for quilt binding, great for general sewing. Um, I use them all the time, bag making, etc. The other ones, these are the Micro Clovers, and I really like these. These are about, oh, roughly maybe like an eighth of an inch. Um, and they're like, you know, half the size of the, the regular. Um, and these, I really love, the, like if I'm putting in a banding onto a neckline in a knit and using my serger, etc. Love these for that. These are the jumbo. Um, these guys here, they you can actually fit more um, fabric in them, etc. And these are the ones that I used with the pant leg. So we're going to come back on camera and show you how, um, how I put this thing on. So let me first just kind of back up a bit. Good. And then I'm going to come over to the machine again and you'll probably get my head and my shoulder in the way but I'll do my best to keep out of the way. So my target is I need to get onto this clamp here and so I did set the machine up for the uh, large oval. I should say the machine sets itself up for the large oval because that's just how smart it is. And uh, let me let me just double check something here. So. I wanted to, um, what I did is I just pushed the embroidery button and I got this message here just to put the hoop onto the machine. If you just put, if you turn on your machine and put the hoop on, the, the arm has to register itself so you'll get a message to take the hoop off of the machine. So I generally, when I'm going to be embroidering, I go into the embroidery mode and where is that is once again this mode here, this last 
let me get here so you can see. Yeah, th this last feature here, this is how I edit designs. This is how I embroider designs. Once I stitch this out, it says, yes, I did uh, confirm it's the large oval hoop. The arm will move, and then I get that signal that it's legal to put on the hoop. And I always wait till things are legal as far as Bernina is concerned. So I'm just, um, my voice is a little bit different distance because I'm coming over here to grab my pant prod. Project. And as you can see, I put the, the clover clips on here, onto the hoop. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to move the camera just a bit. And I'm going to take the bottom of the pant, the bottom of the pant here, I should say it's the top of the pant. This is where the clamp mechanism on it is on. It's right here. So I want to take the pant and put it onto the machine and like just everyone say ooh ah because this is like so fabulous that you can do this on a Bernina machine and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to clamp this onto the arm making sure I get the fabric out of the way there so that's on and then most importantly, I'm going to kind of reach underneath here and make sure that I don't have anything under this, um, that I don't want underneath the embroidery module. So like the bottom of the pant is below here, and then the rest of it is above. And so that's all looking pretty good here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get this design started and we'll be back. So I have a little off uh, camera explaining to do. You might notice that this is no longer the uh, large oval hoop. It's actually the medium hoop. Um, and the reason, f um, the behind the scenes, uh, when, I, when I digitized this design that we're doing in class, I brought it down small enough that it would fit into the medium hoop. It's designed to fit in the large oval hoop. And I was thinking to myself, I'm going to put this on a pair of pants. I want to use a smaller hoop so I can fit into the leg. I think that all makes sense. So um, I digitized it. I'm fairly good at doing this stuff. I brought it to the machine. I Let me just go over to the machine. When you put in a design, if I select a design, your machine, if it's a 7 or 8 series, doesn't matter, it will select the smallest hoop that will accommodate the design. And generally, the advice is golden unless it's not. So I put this design in before starting the video, and it said that I needed the large oval hoop. And I thought, oh my goodness, or something to that effect. I'm sure I di digitized it the correct size. So here I am. I'm putting on the large oval hoop and showing you the initial video for this. And the only reason why I'm going through this and not just editing that stuff out is because this stuff is going to happen to you. So what the spiel was is you see here I have, let me kind of zoom in here just a bit, I have foot 26 on it, which is the foot that I want when I'm doing applique because it's just straight stitching, right? It's just your, 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 ta your placement line, a tack down, and a satin stitch. That's all done with foot number 26. And by the way, you know that embroidery, all we do are straight stitches, right? That's all the needle does. It goes straight up and down. How we get the decorative stitches is that the hoop moves in the X and Y plane. And that's what gives us all the fancy stitches, which includes a zigzag or a satin stitch. So in any event, the machine in its wisdom was calling for the large oval. And I thought, what the hey? Um, the reason why it did is the very last thing that I had done is uh, let me see if I can do this on camera. Is I um, I had foot number uh, 44. Let me find that for us. So it's foot number. And let me see how you not on. Okay, there you are. So I just went up here for um, uh, selecting the stitches, and I went 44. So I had foot 44C on. So when I go out of here. Do you see how my design is no longer in the hoop? And all I can say is boo hoo hoo because I digitized it for the medium hoop. But it's saying a medium hoop because of that red border. It will not fit. Don't try to do this. It's a non-starter. If you did try to stitch something like this out, Bernina will allow you to do it. The issue is going to be that anything that's outside of the red lines, the red box you can see here, which is the perimeter of the medium hoop, it will in essence be um, 
uh, jumped over. It, it won't be stitched out. We're very unique in that way because other manufacturers will say, that, no, you got to put on the hoop that I'm requiring it. Um, so I like that about Bernina. But the issue was, once again, I had the wrong foot selected. So that's why I got the red border around the medium hoop. So I digitized it correctly. I just neglected to tell the machine that I indeed have the foot 26 on. And as you can see now, life is beautiful. So um, hopefully that, that was help. Uh, so the other thing I want to show you is, um, and again, no judgment on the quality of these pants. Okay, I'm putting a patch on it, guys. So you see the little X here? This is where, when I was additioning the patch, that's where I wanted the patch to go. So on our machines, what we're able to do is we've got on the Plus machines this new feature. Let me show you. I'm going to come back up here. It's relatively new. It's been out a couple of years now. Um, so I'm going to come back under the editing mode and I'm going to say, uh, let's see, I want the information and this is where I have my precise positioning. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to say in my precise positioning I want it to be centered. I could certainly put it like say on a line like a block of text or what have you. I'm just going to say I want this to be where I say the center is. So now what I do is I come down to the hoop. I'm going to be using the knobs on my machines. You know you love these knobs. Uh, the zigzag by the way, think of a zigzag, it's going to move the hoop in the X coordinate, you know, left and right. And the straight stitch, think of it as a straight stitch, it's pointing up and down. So that's going to move it north and south. So hopefully that's of help. So I'm going to come down here. Yes, I am. Here's where my little X is. And I'm going to say I need you to come down just a bit and I'm going to say come over a little bit and I'm going to say that's good. I can certainly drop the needle down to make sure, oh my god, that's so perfect. So, and I'm going to say now, not only say, but I'm going to actually push, hope I'm not making you dizzy, set. And so, you've seen applique before, so I don't think I necessarily have to go over I'm stitching all these different things. You understand now that the pant leg, let me back out a bit, the pant leg is in essence wrapped around the free arm here. I check to make sure by reaching underneath here that there's nothing in the hoop other than what I want to stitch on. And I'll stitch it on and then I'll come back and I'll show you the, um, the results. So I put the pants on after I appliqued them and yes, as you can see, these holes have been taken care of for now, but I'm going to keep these pants for probably another 10 years. So who knows how many more Bernina embroidery software classes will feature these pants as I Frankenstein them and keeping them going. Just as an aside, it has nothing to do with the lesson, but you see this way cute embroidery here on my sleeve. Let me see if I can get in there. So it's the phases of the moon, right? The full moon, three quarter, half moon, and then the quarter moon here. And it's rabbits in the moon. This was on urban, urban threads. And I put this on so many different garments. It's a nice design. And so again, urban threads, if you're after some really cool designs, consider that. So hope this was helpful as far as the demo.